You guys all here? Are you guys able to hear me? Yeah, cool. Okay, so we'll just kind of uh, give it some time as people start to kind of make their way in. I wanna thank you guys. Oh, there you go, Josh, you're unmuted. Josh, say something. Yeah, there we go. I'll say it, man, you got me muted, yo. I know, okay, <laughs> let me get my headphones connected in. Let's see. Let me see if there's a way to. So welcome in everyone. We'll wait a little bit for people to just keep popping on. And position. Right. Cool. All right, so I think what we'll do is we'll kind of just get started here. Um, so we wanted to kind of just start off by showing a quick little diagram just to kind of give you guys a, a quick perspective on kind of what exactly are we doing with this quote unquote joint space training. So let me see if I can get you guys to see it. Um, as you can tell, I'm an, I'm an amazing artist. Um, and so what you're going to see here is kind of a representation of what we're doing within our joints, right? Now, this green here is representative of our workspace, meaning when I take my arm through a range of motion, how big of a circle we create is essentially how big of a workspace we can move through, okay? Now, that workspace, how big of a circle and how the quality of that circle is heavily determined by going back to the diagram, how much joint space is available. So this is represented by the blue. So th if this is one bone and this is another bone, so for example, as I bring my arm up, we're talking about this bone moving on the shoulder blade, okay? And this makes up the shoulder joint. Now, if this area, the blue area is restricted or fibrotic or tight. The amount of workspace you are able to move through is going to be extremely limited. Okay. Now, as Josh goes through the hip range of motion, let's say you're going through the hip cars and you notice you're making all these weird movements just to find space. A lot of that is determined by the blue region of the joint space. So, when you're doing all the rotational movement, I want you guys to kind of be aware of why we're actually going through this, okay? And so we'll continue to kind of help you guys understand the why of all this training um, as Josh goes through it, but wanted to give you just a quick representation, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Josh, and he's going to take you guys through a little bit of the assessment. All right, guys. So if you could go ahead and lie on your back. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna see what workspace we are working with for the hip. So just like Joey was saying, we can see how far the limb moves can give us an idea of what the joint's capable of. So go ahead and lie on your back. And the first one we're gonna do is what's called external rotation. So put your non-test leg straight. I'm testing my right leg. Let's bring it up to 90. So 90 degrees at the hip, 90 degrees at the knee. And then what we're gonna do is slowly bring it in as far as we can without shifting the femur position, without shifting your thighs position. And then what I want you to do is just touch your heel down. How far up did you get? The goal is to be able to get up to mid thigh. So I have some work to do myself personally. So bring it up. Can you get past the kneecap at least? This is just a starting point for all of us. It gives us somewhere to start. Am I stiff? Am I not? It gives you a starting point. Now from there, let's reverse it out. So the normal for this is 45 degrees. So that's making sure that your heel can go out past your body. So I'm like, bring it back down. See, I got it out past the body. All right. Now the next thing, go ahead and grab your knee and bring it to your chest. 
Now you're asking yourself, am I having a pinch point? Where do I have my tension at? Where do I feel restricted? If you're having a pinch point, then we know we better dive deeper into these rotational deals because the rotational deals help us open up this range. So later on when Joey talks about the squat, this is gonna be important. Now let's switch to the other side. So straighten the right leg, let's bring the left up to that 90, and then let's bring it across the body, and then put the heel down. How far up did you get? Did you get past your kneecap? Did you get to your shin? Did you get to mid thigh? We wanna shoot for mid thigh. Now we're gonna reverse it out. Did I get my heel past my body or am I right here? Is my heel lined up with my body? We wanna be past our body. And then the next test, pulling the knee to the chest. Where do I feel my tensions? Is it the buttocks? Am I getting a pinch point? These are all things to make note of because ultimately these things are gonna help us dictate which mobility drills are gonna be best for you. And that's where we get customized mobility training. Now, let's go ahead and get into this 90-90 position. Let's have the left leg in front. So I'm gonna switch it up on you guys. So left leg up in front, right leg bent back into this 90 degree, 90 degree direction. And we're gonna do our passive stretch. So I want you guys to pretty much bring the chest bone over the front knee. Keep your spine elongated. So stay tall, don't let your spine flex. Cause then you're just stretching your back and not your hip. So let's stay up nice and tall and hover the chest bone over the knee, the shin. And let's hang out here for a little bit. Now this is where we get into our terms. Like we talked about last time, if you're returning onto this, this uh, routine again. So we have two terms, we have flexibility and we have mobility. So flexibility is the passive ability to go into a range. So right now we're just letting our body go into a range of motion in our hip. Now the true magic sauce is mobility, the ability to actively control this range of motion. And this is where we get reductions in injury, injury mitigation and, and improved, I guess, stress across the whole entire joint versus just stress on parts of the joint. We wanna make sure the joint can move through its fullest range possible in a controlled manner. Well, let's go ahead and inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth and get a little deeper into that range. Now let's hang out here. You should be feeling a stretch in your buttock, maybe even a little bit of hamstring area, but this is gonna bring us to our actual workout part of this stretch. So I want you guys to imagine that you have a scale under the outside of your knee and under the outside of your ankle, and you're gonna stay in this position and now we're gonna press into the floor. So imagine like you want those scales to read 30 pounds, then 40 pounds, 50, 70, 80, and then we got 100 pounds of force going through the floor and let's hold, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stay in position, try and unload the scales, unload the scales, make them read zero. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and kind of relax into that range of motion. Let's hang out here for the flexibility part of it again. Kind of hanging out here, fireside chat. Uh, remember, every time you exhale, try and take up some slack in your brain. But remember, don't let the back flex. We want to keep the spine nice and elongated and straight as we fold over our chest and hovering over that front knee. Um, Tensions might be different for each of you, so follow where your tension's at. If it brings you over here and you feel more tension, go over there. It doesn't have to be over here. Follow your tension, everybody's different. So let's get back to that isometric, you ready? So let's put the scales under the outside portions. Let's make those scales read 30 pounds, 40 pounds, 50, 70, 80, and then 100%, let's hold, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Unload those scales, make them read zero. Don't change body position. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Awesome, relax into that range for a second. Let's hang out here. Nice work guys. Now with that lift off one where we're trying to unload the scales, you should be feeling it in your groin muscles because we're trying to raise the knee to the chest, but since we're in that deep range, we're unable to, so it becomes what's called an isometric. An isometric is a contraction, a muscle contraction without movement. 
So let's go ahead and now rotate into that back leg, fireside chat pose. Now we're stretching what's called internal rotation. So, so far we addressed mobility work for the first part of the test that we just did in the beginning. Now we're addressing the second component of the screen that we did by working internal rotation now passively. We're hanging out here building flexibility in that hip. Um, this stretch is gonna feel a little different than other stretches because it's a little bit of what's called capsular in nature. You're gonna feel a little bit deeper tension, a little bit firmer end fill versus muscle stretch. Muscle stretch is totally different feeling. And then remember, try and drop the buttock down and then imagine like you're trying to side bend towards your, your back heel towards that. So I'm stretching my right, I'm trying to side bend towards my right a little bit and rotating forwards. Now for the active component of this, we're gonna imagine the scales are now under the inside portion of the knee and ankle. And now we're gonna slowly drive into the floor to make it read 30 pounds of force on the scale, 50, 60, 80, and then 100% we're ramped up, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now unweight the foot, drive through this knee, squish the scale, try and lift the foot, but stay in this rotated position. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one, and then relax, take up the slack. Remember guys, if it's causing a little bit of knee discomfort, just let the knee bend a little bit, take some of that stress away. But if it's not hurting, let's create as much leverage into this hip as possible. And let's rotate into it. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, take up the slack. And remember, we're trying to find where our tension's at, wherever that may be. If you're trying to side bend towards to get more, turn, rotating towards to get more, that works. Now let's place those scales under for another round of the, the isometric contraction. We got the scales under the inside portion of the knee and ankle. Let's get 30 pounds of force through that. Make those scales read 60, 70, 80, 100% we're holding. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now imagine like you're trying to lift this foot up, drive through this part of your knee. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Take up the slack. Let's hang out for a second. Fireside chat. Hanging out, breathing it out, in through the nose, out the mouth. Kind of feel that range that you have. A few more seconds. All right, now I'm gonna face, I'm gonna square up with you guys. Stay in this position, we're gonna do our opener. So the goal here is you're gonna drive through your pivot on your back foot to open the thigh. But the goal is, I don't want you guys opening by twisting the pelvis. I want you to lock pelvic position, nice up and tall, and then we're gonna open. You guys ready? Open, ring it out, five. Four, three, two, one, and then back down. Open, ring it out further. Five, four, three, two, one, and then back down. And then open, ring out further. Come on, come on, it's a game here. Let's go as high as we can. Five, four, three, two, one, and then back down. And then open it up. Five, four, three, two, one, and then last one. Let's bring it out, guys. Stay up nice and tall. Open, come on. You got a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome, guys. All right, now let's switch to the other side. Now I got my right leg in front. We're gonna work the external rotation here. All right, so remember, square up, and then mentally take a note of which side do I feel tighter. This side, definitely external rotation is a little bit tougher. So let's get nice and tall, shift the body weight over, and let's hover the chest bone over the knee. Remember, don't flex the spine. I don't want you guys to be flexing because we're just stretching the back. I want you to get the spine locked in position, hover the chest bone over, and we're hanging out here. We're hanging out for the passive component. Um, recommendations usually 45 seconds to a minim, minim, minute minimum. The longer, the better. If you're truly trying to improve flexibility, then we got to do like the two minute holds. But for here, we're doing 45 to a minute. So inhale through the nose, 
Exhale through the mouth, take up the slack. Hold that slack that you just took up, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, take up the slack. Now inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, take up the slack. All right, nice. Now we're now at our end range here. We're gonna place those scales under the outside of the knee and ankle and don't change torso position. Let's start driving through the floor, make the scales read 30 pounds, make them read 50 pounds, just gradually ramping up, 60, 70, 80, and then 100, we're holding. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Don't change torso position, lift the leg. Try and lift it, but it's isometric. Lift, one weight. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one, and then relax into the stretch again. Let's hang out here, focusing on the breath. Fun fact, when you inhale, you're activating a little bit more of your sympathetic chain, meaning, meaning you're activating that fight or flight response when we inhale. That's why it's important when you inhale through your nose, you exhale. Try and accentuate the exhale because it allows you to relax that sympathetic chain, allows you to relax your muscle tension. That's why you'll notice that when you exhale, you'll start to relax deeper into the range. So inhale through the nose, exhale, take up the slack, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Okay, now we're in our deepest range here. Let's put those scales back under. Are you guys ready? Let's drive through the floor. Your buttocks should be on, 30 pounds of force, 40 pounds, 50, 60, 80, and then 100, right? 100%, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stay in position, try and unload the scales. Make scales read zero. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then we're hanging out here, guys. Hang out in the passive stretch for a sec again. And then we're about to go back into the fireside chat position. Doing really good here. The key is respect pinch points though. At the end of the day, man, we don't want to pinch point because that means it's a joint restriction that needs to be addressed and not forced through. So let's go ahead and rotate into our fireside chat. Remember we're rotating the body towards that back heel. And then I'm trying to drop the buttocks down as I rotate. And then remember, if the knee's hurting, bend the knee a little bit. That will reduce the stress. So I'm hanging out here, trying to find my tension. So kind of scooting around. Once I find it, then we're hanging out here. And that's where the breath comes in again. Now it's like, inhale through the nose, let the body know, okay, relax into that, we're safe. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Find that tension, hold. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose, Exhale through the mouth. Take up the slack. One more time. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Okay, now we're going to place those scales. I'm going to scoot so you guys can see. Place the scales under the inside portion of the knee and ankle. You guys ready? Stay in that stretch position. Start to drive through the floor. Make the scales read 30 pounds. 40, 50, 60, 80. And we got 100%. We're holding 15, 14, 13, 15. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stay in position. Try and unload your foot by driving through this front knee. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Take up the side. Hang out. Focus on the breath again. So on that last one we just did, we should have felt the buttocks trying to turn on. You may be feeling a little bit more of a TFL region, which is a little bit more in the front of the body. I want you guys to focus on the butt squeeze when we do the unload to get you a little bit more of that glute meat activation. So let's hang out here again, just passive component. Find that stretch, tension, follow it. And it's in, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. One more inhale, take up the slack, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Now let's put our scales. Scales are inside the portion of the knee and ankle. Let's start to drive through, drive through the floor. 30 pounds, 
40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and then 100. We're holding 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Unload the foot, drive through the hip, squeeze the butt. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now relax and chill. Let's hang out here for a sec. Take up that slack, sit into it. And then I'm about to set up for our openers, guys. All right, so let's, I'm gonna rotate. Let's reset up so our arms are in front. And then we're gonna put the spine nice and tall. And then what we're gonna do is we're pivoting on that back foot. You guys ready? So pivot around the back foot and open. Don't let the pelvis rotate. Pull, five, four, three, two, one. And then back down, open, pull, five, four, three, two, one, and then back down, and then open. Kind of ring out some more range. Five, four, three, two, one, and then back down, and then open. Butt squeeze, squeeze the butt, open. Five, four, three, two, one, and then back down, open. Five, four, three, two, one, and then back down. Last one, let's ring it out, guys, open. Come on, you got a little bit more in you. Come on, bring it up a little bit more. Don't let the pelvis hold. Hold it. Five, four, three, two, one, and then back down. All right, let's take it out. Let's get out of that position for a sec. All right, now I want you guys to lie on your side, like so. Now straighten both your knees. Let me get up here. Straighten both your knees, and the top leg's gonna be working. So since I'm lying on my on my left side here. I'm keeping the left knee bent. Let's interlace our hands to create tension in the body. Reach forward with that tension. Now we're gonna bring the knee forward, as far as you can, up to the ceiling. Rotate the foot to the ceiling as you start to kick backwards. So this is our hip car that we usually do on our hands and knees on the side. So bring it forward, open up to the ceiling, flare up to the ceiling, bring it back. One more. Up, up to the ceiling, kick the foot up to the ceiling, start to kick back, and back down. Now let's reverse. Kick backwards, up to the ceiling. Now start to go into that Captain Morgan position, and then back to the starting point. One, two more here, kick back, open up to the ceiling, Captain Morgan, and then back across. Last one, kick back, open up to the ceiling, Bring that foot in front and then back down. All right, guys, switch sides. Both legs straight, interlace fingers. Great body tension. Now let's bring that knee up towards the same side elbow, up to the ceiling. Flare that foot up to the ceiling as you kick back. Flex your hip, same side elbow, open up, kick up to the ceiling. And extend as you're kicking up the ceiling. One more. Forward, out to the side, kick up to the ceiling, start kicking backwards, and then back. Now let's reverse it. Let's go kick backwards, keep that knee bent, backwards, up to the ceiling, bring it around across, and back down. Kick backwards. It's funny watching myself on the screen trying to match it up to the ceiling, bringing it back around across, back down. One more, nice and slow, guys. Kick backwards. Put knee up to the ceiling, Captain Morgan position, bring it around, last one, let's ring it out, kick back, up to the ceiling, and then back down, nice, all right, go ahead, Joey. All right, all right, good work, guys, all right, so since Josh took care of the majority of a lot of the rotational work, I'm going to focus on a little bit more of kind of like the quad and the hamstring, so what I would like for you guys to do, for those that feel comfortable, I want you to get into the half kneeling position. So like this. If you, if you guys have any knee issues, you can do the same exact position, but you would just essentially be like this, okay? So for those of you that have problems being on your knees, lay on your side and get into the same half kneel position, okay? So this, this concept 
falls in line with exactly what Josh was talking about with flexibility and mobility. So what I want you to do is grab your foot if you can and widen your base a little bit. So this, this front leg, you can put it out to the side so you're not fighting balance. Or if you need to, hold yourself on a wall so just so that you don't lose balance during this mobility drill, okay? So from here, you're gonna notice that your lower back wants to arch. So I want you guys to tuck the tail. When you tuck the tail, you'll start to feel a little bit more of a stretch. So squeeze your glutes, hold on to something, make sure that you're here and just find your breath, okay? So we're gonna go through just a couple of the pails and rails. So like the isometric contractions that you did in the 90-90. What I want you to do here is with this back leg, you're gonna push down into the hand. And at the same time, you're gonna drive your knee into the ground and scoop it forward. And you'll, what you'll feel is a lot of, tension on the front side okay so let's tuck the tail go ahead and kick into your hand slowly build up that scale and i want that to read 80 to 100 percent of your force so let's fight for it guys come on tuck that tail push 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 now three two one slowly let go of your foot tuck your tail and hold it up with your hamstrings fight for it cramp city let's go right here let's go let's hold hold Oh, three, two, one, grab it again and relax and breathe into it. All right, so find your breath. We're gonna run it back. You guys ready? Let's go ahead and push down into the ground and push into your hand. Let's go, use that quad. Push, 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 let's go. Re let that scale read 80, 100% force. Five, four, three, two, one, slowly let go of your ankle and hold. Squeeze, get that hamstring to work. Make sure the back doesn't arch, tuck that tail and hold. Let's go, come on, come on, come on. Five, four, three, two, one, grab it again. All right, guys, this is when it gets really, really dicey now, okay? So we're gonna go for 10 consecutive holds, okay? Let's work with it. So pull it up as high as you can. Get that stretch, tuck the tail so the back doesn't arch, and let's get to work. Ready? Slowly let go and hold. Hold, stay tall, tuck the tail, hold, hold, grab it. Good work. All right. Ready? Let go and hold, 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 and grab. That's two. Ready? And let go. Hold, hold, hold. Hold and grab. Let's go. Ready? Let's go. Let go. Hold. 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 Hold and grab. Good work, everyone. Come on. Let's go. Ready? Let go and hold. 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 Hold and grab. Woo. Let's let's get let's go. We got four more. Let's go. Ready? Let go. Hold. 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 Hold and grab. Three more and let go, hold, 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 and grab, two more, pull that up as high as you can, get that heel as close as you can to your butt, and then gradually let it go, and hold, and hold, hold, and grab, Whew. okay, let's go, last one, pull it up, and let go, and hold, 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 three, two, one, boom. Good work, everybody. Good work. So this is just like that quad stretch that you, a lot of people have done, right? Like this is a quad stretch, but the part that we're really trying to capture here is the active component, which is using the hamstrings to essentially stretch the quads. Okay. So opposite side, let's get right to it, guys. Let's go ahead and get into long spine position, wider base. So we don't fight balance and just kind of get settled in, tuck the tail, feel that stretch. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and just kind of focus on breathing into this and prepare your body to, to kick into the hands. All right, so let's go. Start to ramp up, push into your hands, dig your knee into the floor and scoop it forward to engage the hip flexors. Let's push, push, three, two, one, slowly let it go and hold. Keep holding, keep holding, keep holding. 
Let's go. Three, two, one, grab it. Good work, guys. This is hard. This is, uh, if you guys are getting cramps, it's, it's a very, it's a normal occurrence, especially if you've never trained in this capacity, okay? So let's go. Push down, push, push. Come on, come on. Get those quads. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly let it go and hold, hold. Come on, tuck that tail, tuck that tail. Five, four, three, two, one. One, good work, grab it. All right, let's go guys. We got, some, we got a little bit of work to do. Let's pull it up as high as you can. All right, ready? And slowly let it go and hold. Hold, tuck that tail, squeeze. Hold, hold, grab it, good. Okay, let's keep it going. Ready? Let go and hold. Hold, 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 and grab it. That's two. Ready? Let it go. Hold. Hold, 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 and grab it. Let's go. Ready? Pull and let it go. Hold. Create tension in that body. Tuck that tail. Make sure we get it truly from the hamstring. And grab. Let's go. Almost there, guys. Good work. Good work. Ready? And let it go. Hold, 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 and grab. Ready? And let go. Hold, hold. Hold and grab, four more. And let go, hold, 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 and grab. Three more, ready, and let go. Hold, 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 and grab, good guy. Good job, let's go, two more, two more. Ready, and let go, <sighs> squeeze, 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 good, and grab. Make this your best one, ready? Pull it up, and ready, and let go and hold hold five four three two one and back down Woo. expect the hamstrings to be sore tomorrow from that one okay so if, if you guys cramp very normal um we're gonna just introduce one short um short drill to help with the quads okay we're gonna do this one really quick but i wanted to make sure we got this in before our time ended today okay so what I'd like you guys to do is you're gonna go ahead and get on, on your knees. And the goal here is I want you to tuck the tail to make sure that your trunk and your thighs are in one line and your big toes are anchored into the ground, okay? The movement is gonna be something like this, right? So you're slowly gonna tuck the tail you're slowly gonna fall back to however far you feel comfortable. And then from there, you're gonna push through your big toes to push yourself back up, okay? As you fall back, you'll start to feel a crazy stretch on the quads, and then you're gonna drive out, okay? What you'll notice, you'll find this temptation to fall back, but I want that trunk to be in one line with the thigh, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do about 10 of these and we'll call it good, okay? So let's go ahead and nice and slow fall back. That's one. Fall back, nice and slow. And push back, that's two. Fall back, and push back, that's three. Fall back, and that's four. Tuck that tail, tuck that tail. Good, let's go guys. Nice and slow, fall back, fall back, and drive out. Good, let's go, four more good ones. Fall back, keeping that tail tucked and drive, good, nice and slow, fall back, and drive, good, let's go, two more guys, nice and slow, and drive, boom, and last one, nice and slow, let it fall back, and drive, boom, good work, everyone, Woo! so I know that was a little accelerated at the end, but what I wanted to give you was something different than what Josh gave in regards to the rotational work. So the rotational work was what we were referring to in regards to opening the joint space. So Josh gave you all the rotational work to make it feel a little bit more open. Then we started using the tissues around it. So we taught you guys how to learn and move through the space. So um, if you guys have any questions, I think we have like a few more minutes on this chat. Feel free to drop it in the chat box. Um, if you guys found that any parts of your assessment were problematic, whether there was pain, 
or any kind of restriction that you don't really know how to navigate yourself around, feel free to email us. We're, uh, we're actually giving out, you know, 20 minute free consults just to kind of help you guys out virtually. And so if we can provide any assistance on how to help you guys, like we're here, we really want to help you guys navigate and really empower you guys just to figure out how to move your body. So uh, don't hesitate to hit us up. All right, guys. So if you guys don't have any questions, um, yeah, we'll just, I mean, we'll just hang out for a bit, but feel free to drop it on the chat. So thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Thank All you. right, everyone. Dr. B, what's good? <laughs> <laughs> what's up, man? <laughs> Not much, dude. All right. My Those hammy ones kill, dude. Like, I got I know. no hammies. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you falling over. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, man, 10. 